Trump had some interesting commentary on Meta, on Facebook, and the CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, after that assassination attempt, while the polls clearly were favoring Donald Trump, like, you know, basically there was no contest because Joe Biden was so out of it and falling, 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 falling in this free fall event. And that's just the reality of what was going on. That's why they had to change the candidate in a very undemocratic way, if you ask me. Anyway, you got a phone call from the Meta CEO right after that attempt. And I'll let him explain in his own words just exactly what Mark wanted to talk to him about. Listen. I just said that the picture wasn't altered. It, at first they said it was altered, and then they said, no, it was a bug. So was Mark Zuckerberg. My, my point is, is right. these companies would not allow any information yeah. out about what happened. So Mark Zuckerberg called me. First of all, he called me a few times. He called me after the event, and he said that was really amazing. It was very brave. And, you know, and he actually announced he's not going to support a Democrat because he can't because he respected me for what I did that day. I think what I did maybe was a norm. To me, it was a normal response. But I was called by Mark Zuckerberg yesterday, the day before, on this same subject. And he actually apologized. He said they made a mistake, et cetera, et cetera, and they're correcting the mistake. Uh, Google, nobody called from Google. One of the things, like doing a show like yours, you, your show, you know, you see it on Fox. But what you really see it is all over the place. They take clips of your show that you're doing right now with me. And if I do a good job, they're going to vote for me. They're going to vote for me because it's not just on Fox. It's on Fox is a smaller part of it. You're on all over this, those little beautiful cell phones. You're on you're all over the place. You have a product. You have a great product. You have a great brand. So you have to get out. You have to get out. You have to do things like your show and other shows. And Google has been very bad. They've been very irresponsible. And I have a feeling that Google is going to be close to shut down because I don't think Congress is going to take it. I really don't think so. Google has to be careful. Now, I will say this. I believe Mark Zuckerberg, he called me so he called me a lot. They are working and I think they fixed it. But what can and he's do not doing this? what he did four years ago with the five hundred million dollars. I don't believe. OK, so in fairness to Google, I will say that we're on YouTube right now and I appreciate that they allow us here on YouTube and we're streaming direct and you guys are liking and subscribing and sharing and hitting the bell. Don't forget to hit the bell. Um, so that's all really, really good. I think what he's referring to is, remember the other day there was some concern about the search and when you actually search for the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, the, everything came up except for what happened to Donald Trump. And so there were a lot of questions in terms of the algorithms and the technology behind the algorithms as to why that was. Now, I, I can tell you again from personal experience, that Meta is really not allowing anything through politically. But I do think that the CEO made a phone call, maybe because, hey, he wanted to uh, cover his bases. I mean, is this kind of like a giant, you know what, kissing kind of deal? Because let me just say that if Trump is in office, I think a lot of companies are going to be suddenly very much on guard and you want to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer, shall we say. So I think that there may have been a method to the madness as far as Mark is concerned. Here he is with another one of my former colleagues, Emily Tang, talking on Bloomberg the other day, really complimenting Donald Trump. I mean, think about what that's about, really. I think we have this sound bite. I think we do. Maybe we can come back to it with Drew. Um, but again, you know, he, he went on and he, he, he sounded to me like he was kissing some serious, you know what, right? Because I mean, what, what else is that? You go on Bloomberg and you start saying about how heroic he is and how he's such a bad, do we have it, Drew? Let's see. He'll tell me. Yeah, he's looking for it. He's looking for it. So anyway, um, we'll, we'll get back to you on that one. But you know the clip. I think uh, we, we run it on the show. My uh, former colleague there at Bloomberg, Emily Chang, sitting down with Mark Zuckerberg, who said, yep, you know what? He is a total bad. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Let's watch it. <laughs> I've done some stuff personally in the past. I'm not planning on doing that this time. Um, and that includes, you know, not endorsing either of the candidates. Um, now, look, I mean, there's obviously a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. I mean, the historic events over the last, like, over the weekend. And, I mean, on a personal note, it's, 
you know, I mean, seeing Donald Trump get, get up after getting shot in the face and pump his fist in the air with the American flag is one of the most badass things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but, um, but, but look, I mean, it's, um, you know, as, and I think, look, it's, at some level as an American, it's like hard to not get kind of emotional about that spirit um, and that fight. And I think that that's why a lot of people like the guy. Wow. So that was really kind of interesting to hear from Zuckerberg. And, and you wonder what motivated him to say this. I don't think it's like this purely, you know, rah-rah America moment for him. I don't think it's entirely emotional. I think he's kind of worried about the future of his company, depending on who comes into office. But that's neither here nor there. We'll take it for what it's worth and appreciate him for saying it. All right. Like that was good of him to say. And he should say that. And it, it's nice that he called the president to explain and apologize in terms of what was really going on at, at Facebook. But just keep in mind, like they, they took away the former president's account while, while he was still president <laughs> and then just recently allowed him to start opening up again. He got the account back, but he wasn't like fully unleashed. It's, it's kind of strange and kind of alarming when you think about things because we want to live in a free enough society where we can all speak our minds. And, and that means sometimes the other side of the political aisle, right? And you have to have some respect for that and willingness to listen to all sides. But as we think about that moment in Butler County, Pennsylvania, and I'll tell you, Donald Trump is amazing for going back there and doing a speech again. Truly, truly, truly amazing. I mean, that moment will, I think, forever be seared in so many of our minds when he stood up and the, you know, the, the blood was dripping down the side of his face and he had just been grazed by a bullet in the ear, nearly taken out, his life almost gone. And he looked up at everybody and said, fight, fight, fight. I mean, it just gives me chills when I think about it right now, truly. And I say that with nothing else at stake, right? I, I don't own Meta. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's no danger um, for me about regulations for my company. I say that just to you as an everyday American, I was blown away, absolutely blown away, as I'm sure you were too. But I'm angry as well because we still don't have answers about the Secret Service.